Hey team, this is Mark Jewell, host of the Intentional Agribusiness Leader Podcast. Welcome back to another great episode. I'm on with my new friend, Justin Miller, who is the VP of Strategic Accounts and Sustainable Solutions. I believe I got most of that right. <laughs> uh, with, uh, with, with Ostara. And uh, Justin, welcome to the call, man. Thanks for making the time to, to be out here. Apologies if I butchered any of that, of the, the job title and everything, but super excited to jump in and have this conversation today, man. Yeah, I really appreciate the time. Yeah, glad uh, glad we stuck it out. Glad we got on the calendar. Hey, I like to open up with the with the same question for everybody. What what is what's it mean for you, Justin, to, to be intentional? Great question. I mean, um, for me, and and again, a long history in agronomy and sales, uh, twenty seven years. It's it's really having being hyper focused on you know driving the end goal. Um, so to me, it and as as I've ran sales teams for a lot of my career or agronomy teams, it's all about really bringing the right people on board and then helping them succeed and, you know, getting out of their way and just helping them solve issues, uh, whether that's driving great agronomy or, or revenue, whatever, it, whatever it means. I just really look as myself at myself as a really that servant leader. I've always just, you know, here's the, everybody knows what the overall direction at the end of the day, um, this is the agribusiness. The business means revenue. We all know what we need to do. And just let me help you let, you know, let me help you to achieve your goals for your territory, your region, your country, whatever that might be. So to me, that's intentional, right? It's, it's servant leadership is, is what I believe in. Yeah. I love it. Let's, let's, if you don't mind, let's dive into that servant leadership topic. I know it's a lot of people uh, maybe say it, you know, like they talk about it and I, I, don't, I don't know if they can qualify what, what do they do really to be a servant leader so what what's really important for you and you you, you talked about the being hyper focused like hey team this is the end goal this is what we're after these are the numbers these are the margins uh these are the customers we want etc uh i'm here to support you we got great people on the team what what are those what's that special approach that justin brings to the table it's all about communication for me i mean um to me it all it usually boils down to to weekly meetings right uh, let's let's see what's going on in the countryside. Uh, let's get the feel of of retail of distribution of end customer. Um, mm -hmm. But it's always if you're in a management position, right? You're you're not in the C suite. You're in the middle, right? So it's uh, so there's there's corporate goals and there's revenue goals, and and sometimes you're the intermediate between that, and you need to listen to and, and drive to hear both sides and be the person in the middle to communicate that. I think right. There's a, usually some. Uh, potentially disconnect between C-suite and uh, the folks in the field uh, selling a product. And, and that's the, that's the wire that you really walk on. Right. So to me, it's achieving both. I, I've said this, I've, you know, I want to have my cake and eat it too. And that's really what it's like being in the middle. Right. I want to, I want to get everybody in the C-suite happy and I want to get what we need from the sales team. But both of those groups need to speak, right? They need to communicate that. We need to find the end goal. So to me, it uh, the the thing that I think I've been, when I see teams not functioning well, it's when groups or subgroups get into silos, right? And and it can mm -hmm. depend upon the diversity of a company. I've been in, I've worked for manufacturers for, for most of my sales career. Um, so you've got production, you've got engineers, you've got marketing, right. And just that constant contact between and staying aligned is so important because, um, certain groups and it's all groups, not certain ones, those have a propensity to go into one way and, and another to go in, the, in, in another. So I think it's, it's really that just center point and, and knowing that your team can always call you, right? Just reach out. And it's it's all about, and I would even say it's, you know, forcing communication at some point in time. And again, I'll go back to a weekly meeting where we all jump on, you know, a Zoom call and, and meeting, whether it's quarterly in person or uh, at least twice a year, right? Just that con connectivity um, is just huge. And it just all, that's where it all boils down to is communication. I yeah. think- there's natural tendencies as as complex as as egg manufacturing has got um, that there's just tendencies to stay in your comfort zone and no one's going to win collectively if groups 
staying in their comfort zones or their silos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree about the you know, communication being such an important component. It's, a, it's an important pillar of being deliberate as a leader, right? And 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 so I certainly agree with that. What is the right cadence? Do you think, or what? When I when I talk about cadence, it's the cadence is how how regularly are we meeting? What's the expectation with the employee that hey, we meet every Monday, rain or shine which obviously Zoom eliminates that these days. It can be anywhere, <laughs> but no matter what, right? 10 a.m. on Mondays, right? That's our team. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, What's I'm a your... big, big proponent of a weekly, a weekly call, right? And yeah. uh, depending on the size of the team, I would always over invite groups because I want to make sure that, you know, the commercial team, the sales force, right? They're pretty, you know, equal-minded, it, but it's really important for science for groups from the science side to step in from and depending again upon what type of manufacturing you're doing production folks head of production the head of uh, marketing obviously big part of the commercial team um so every group they have an open invitation to come to these meetings they can choose not to but kind of what i would always set it on we're going to meet for 90 minutes and you know the groups would be anywhere from probably 10 to 15 folks perhaps just depending uh, depending on how large the sales staff is, of course. And um, really, and the the whole reasoning behind that is we have an hour and a half. Sometimes it's going to take 30 minutes. We're going to go roll through this fast. We're all busy. We're all out in the field. It's that peak season. But sometimes we're going to go over. And let's just let this thing flow naturally. Sometimes the you know, salesperson is going to go on. Here's the issue that I'm having with this, you know, part of our product or distribution or retail, here's a challenge I'm having. And the next person's like, you know, everything's going good. They're done in 30 seconds, right? It's everything's going fine. It takes a minute or two. Um, so I think that thing just ebbs and flows and different parts, uh, different components of the overall business will just have deeper dives some week than others. And um, I find it so valuable. I was, uh, you know, if, if they haven't been in, in place, uh, before I've come in, I've implemented them. And it's just, just a, it's just a reconnect. Everybody is so busy Monday through Friday and so much activity goes on that it was that, it was that point in the week that we could all realign and really kind of listen to industry trends too, um, to mm -hmm. just to keep sharp, right. To, because it's so, we got to focus on the end goal and know the customer and know that. And obviously somebody from a science team or an engineering team or a production, right. Um, those are really important things. Like what's the feedback of this product? What do they love about it? What do they don't like about it? Does it need to come in a different package size, different offering? Um, I think that's just like everybody truly feels like they're on the same team when you have that focus, because it's not just all about the sales team, right? right. I mean, if you're manufacturing, it's as much about the production team as anything, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's all interrelated. And to think that, you know, spending so much time in sales that sales rules the world. Well, sure. And revenue is important. However, you got to have great work, working relationships with everybody and all the different components that that make your end product. Um, so that's been my philosophy. And I think it, it's worked well. Yeah. Do you think, do you take that on as the servant leader role in the middle manager to sort of pioneer or, well, maybe pioneer is not the right word, but to uh, to 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 help manage all those relationships between the different components of the business does, does that flow through you should the expectation do you think be on the salesperson to be reaching out or is that a distraction for them therefore you try to take it off their plate yeah i really think that um it comes down to you know it's having that open dialogue. So people get to know people from other departments, I guess, through these weekly calls. So like, do you, do I always want to be in the loop, you know, of, a, of an email or communication? Sure. And, but I don't want to, I don't want to have to handhold all those relationships. Right. Cause it's, it's a lot. I want to have that, you know, salesperson uh, feel free to call a head, talk to the head of research. Right. And, and like the, chain of command, sure. It's important. Right. But I think by having those weekly, you get to know, folks at higher levels um, in different departments by collaborating on these weekly meetings, it kind of breaks down those barriers. 
Um, I don't want to sit, I don't want to spend four hours of my day, you know, <laughs> being CC'd on emails and things like, I'm not going to read them. I'll be real honest, right? It's, there's too much, I've got my focus. So, I mean, I appreciate it, but wow, let's break down the walls, right? And, and really feel like, um, like you can communicate to somebody in production. And, and I guess it's something you always, as a middle manager, you have to monitor. You can't have a, you know, have production person calling sales five times a day or vice versa. And, or somebody really beating up, beating on, you know, head of production, calling them five times a day, man, wow, what is going on? Like, okay, that's, you know, it's something you have to referee, I guess, all the time. But um, yeah, I've, I've just, again, I've, I'm always shocked sometimes on how small companies can have people that are just in silos. You know, you kind of think of silos when you think of larger companies, like, mm -hmm. you know, thousands and thousands of employees to an ag division. I've seen silos built up in, in companies that don't have more than 30 employees, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I think that's, it. it's just all that, man, you know what? The commercial team does want to know what the science team, you know, has. And the science team wants to know what the commercial team needs too, right? And, yeah. and we all have to be on the same, same playing field. Yeah, well, again, I, I agree. <clears throat> excuse me, I agree with all of it. And I think that's where, excuse me, intentional leadership is so important because <clears throat> left to their own devices, often people will just drift off and into their silos, not yeah. intentionally. They're not, no, they're not turning their backs, right? There's no malice. There's no malice to that. That's human nature. <laughs> so, Yes, at the end of the day, that's that. I mean, it's it's just we. I got a job to do, right? I've got that. I got this thing, and my incentive is to stay employed, to do a good job, take care of my customer, and generally, my financial incentives will be tied to do those things, right. to doing those things. Things that that are required above and beyond that, if that's building more relationships inside the company. Um, and then having to, you know, work across all these silos. Now all of a sudden that becomes friction if, if, you know, if we yeah. don't have, that. so this is where like a truly intentional leader who's curating a cadence of, of purposeful events, whether it's, you know, the, the, the weekly zoom calls in person meetings, I'd love to talk about that a little bit. Um, and, you know, in, in the virtual nature of the world today, what's your cadence for those kind of things. Um, but like somebody who's really paying attention to, creating the space for people to get to know one another, whether through technology, uh, virtual communication, in-person communication, those kind of things are, are so important now. And often they just occur accidentally. And then we're generally, and, and then they'll call up and say, my people aren't talking, Mark, we got to run it. We, we need a training event to get our people communicating. Like, cool. It's going to be a hundred grand. It may not be that much, but <laughs> <laughs> But you could have saved, not because it's like, not because our fee is that much, right? It's costing you at least that because people are not talking and you could have solved for it with intentional leadership. My my good, um, you know, <clears throat> great. And again, just working for companies of all different scale, you know, global companies, uh, North American only. My, my good friend would always say, you know, internal headwinds. It's the saddest day when the boat doesn't get out of the harbor due to intentional headwinds, right? I, excuse me, internal headwinds. Um, that's bad. Yeah, it's a sad day, right? When you're yeah. when you when you can't agree internally, you've got a great product, and you can't like get to market because there's so much internal friction. That is that's just so sad, right? Uh, yeah. Frustrating for for people at all levels. And I think to your point, right? You if you're not meeting weekly, and and you know I I when I come into companies where, you know, they haven't done this before. They're like, do you really think you need, you know, I get some questions. Do you really think you need this person from science on there? I'm like, they're going to be invited. They choose, they can sit on the first three or four. And if we see them drift off, that's fine. Maybe they then choose to come every fourth time. Or I reach out and I notice their pattern of attendance. I say, Hey, would you mind just like coming in once a month or as a science person, can you lead a topic that we want to learn more about? Things like that, like, uh, you know, we, we'd we have, uh, we we call it side, Friday side day, SCI dash day, right? Just an internal topic. And, and when you're selling products, in, yeah, you're selling products into agronomy world, like, man, I'm getting these questions about this that I don't know. 
like, oh, you realize we got uh, five PhDs that work for us and one of them is specialized in this? Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Their thesis was on this. Oh, and then, you you know, you spend, people are like, wow, it's, it's really, it's great. So um, again, I think that's the, that's the big challenge. It isn't uh, a lot of great products have never made it out into product or services into the marketplace because internally that cross functionality among teams just never clicked and mm -hmm. it wasn't you know i mean i would hate to say the word forced but it wasn't encouraged and mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's sad I've, I've seen that several times and uh, you just go wow you can't get out you can't get this sailboat out of the harbor because you're you got wind blowing at you from inside right it's yeah. just yeah so it's that's that's been my approach and it's fun you got to force a little bit of it early on and you get people kind of going why do we have that it's like hey they're, we all know they they don't have a commercial mindset, and mm -hmm. we have a commercial mindset as as sales folks, and we don't know the deep science to some of their stuff. Like, let's get together and like break that down. So, yep, exactly. And and there's there's some of the simplest things that can be done to solve for some of that friction, right? Absolutely. Let's just take let's take people dropping off of meetings as an example. So generally speaking, what what we know of of human behavior change or for trying to drive certain behaviors. People will continue to make uh, to to make moves and do the uh, curate or create the behaviors that we would like to see out of them as long as they feel like they're making progress. Right. The moment that the progress stops, and I associate that meeting with being a waste of my time because I'm not progressing as because I'm a part of it or or as like it's not helping me progress towards my goals then we start to have a, a certain type of resentment towards that and we'll, and then we'll start finding excuses to not show up yeah okay yeah that may be one one, one way uh, another another reason people stop showing up to meetings is maybe they didn't do their part maybe they didn't show up prepared maybe they didn't feel you know ready or or whatever and or they weren't enough of a part of it and so they'll start looking, well, I got this other thing. I'll, you know, I got, we don't do anything in that meeting anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, just doing stuff. I'm not just bringing gonna... me anything personally. And, and so, I mean, I think that's, that's part of something as a facilitator of those meetings to watch for and to recognize and, and, you know, to see the person that, you know, camera, you know, you know, what goes on the camera's off. They come on yeah. to when it's their turn because, you know, they're on their other monitor <laughs> typing yeah. away. They're on mute. The other monitor's going. They're cranking out emails because they, you know, they're busy too, right? So I think yeah. that's that's part of it. And uh, yeah, it's it's just to be very intentional on that and to watch, you know, and as a facilitator of those types of meetings on a weekly basis, are you, you know, you're always, I was always, you know, monitoring the monitors, Right is are the eyes rolling in the back of the head so you're trying to pick up on those cues which you're yeah. talking about the the, <laughs> the camera oh, going off. Yeah. so yeah. i think that's key. you got to keep it you got to keep it exciting and interesting for them for for a reason to stay on those meetings because we're everybody's busy right calendars are not uh blank <laughs> well and, and, and so here's the breakdown in that is that most people don't know how Right. So uh, pro tip, I'm just simple pro tip. And I don't care if you're facilitating an in-person meeting or if you're facilitating a Zoom meeting, which is going to be 90 percent of them today, um, probably more, uh, probably a larger percentage than that, because most of our stuff is now virtual. But well, it, it, I mean, it literally only takes you five to 10 minutes to pull out your your remarkable, your notepad, your iPad, your iNotes, whatever it is you on your phone or just a piece of paper. And even if you don't send the agenda out for you to take 10 minutes to intentionally curate an agenda of like, hey, here's what we're covering today. I'm yeah. going to toss the ball around about three or four different people. But here's what I want you to do. This is pro tip number two. This one, it doesn't it only takes you maybe five to 10 minutes to do that. So get off your Snapchat because I see you guys on there all the time. <laughs> I put a Snapchat out and I'll have 300 people look at it today before the sun, before we all go to bed and 25 of those are CEOs. So then I know that there's middle managers also doing the same thing. And if they're looking at mine, which is less than two minutes worth of Snapchats, then I promise you they're looking at 30 minutes more. So I say that not to call you out. I like Snapchat too. I like looking at Instagram reels too. But you can't if you if you're getting stuck in the scroll and and you're not intentionally now able to take ten minutes to create an an, an enticing agenda for your team, right? 
pri your priorities, your, your, your standard for how you're experiencing your time, maybe just a little bit low. Okay. Just going to put that out there, but then it's the simplest thing in the world. Like at the onset of this, if we're on a zoom meeting and there's 10 other people on here with us, like, Hey guys, I want you in the comments today. And the opening question is, okay. Uh, I want, I want to hear what's uh, what's one customer that you talked to this week and what was it about? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Start forcing them into the comments. If you ever go to, go to some of these online things or these webinars where people are selling something or they're promoting, uh, maybe doing an online training, you just see people typing in the comments all the time, right? And then you go over to your team meeting and it's crickets, right? You get the, the MJ is all you see of the person that you don't even see their face, right? No, that is an intentionally curated stance by you, by you as the lead facilitator, whoever you are, to create that meeting, do the meeting. And my God, like, Turn on your cameras. Yeah, you're you're in the meeting with your team. Be present. Be here. Let that be the standard for your team. I get very obviously. I get very passionate about this. I get fired yeah. up. It's like, hey, uh, <laughs> what are we doing this if we're not here for each other? Well, it's very true too because those weekly meetings can be the you know everybody the around the horn meeting, which that's fine, but not every week, right? And if it's a tight a tight, everybody knows it's a peak season. Okay, it is around the horn two minutes, you, you know, you preface the meeting with that, you start the meeting out um, with those notes, uh, be tight, like double booked, et cetera, et cetera. But keeping that agenda item, I think, is it keeps it fresh as well, right? And I think it's a really important other part. It's not only to do number one, the weekly meeting, but the weekly meeting can become stagnant if it's just around the horn every week. Cause it's like the same person is going to get into the like, well, here's where I talked to, here's where I went, here's the, uh, da, 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 da. and um, that's not very intentional, I don't think, right? Yep, yep, absolutely, ma'am. All right, well, we went, we went way down that rabbit hole. Thanks for, thanks for playing with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, it, it's, uh, you know what though, sometimes it's really low hanging fruit for for people when they come into an organization and and just to, you know, mm -hmm. like bring into this. Uh, higher level of communication i i again have seen where you know there's all these subgroups and the subgroups meet and of course they're everybody's meeting like there is another sales team meeting during the week and it's after this meeting and engineering this and that and the other thing but to come together and really bring the highlights of that everybody just feels more a part of the team everybody wants to know what's going on as much as they can they're not want to get into the to the you know the very fine details but a high level knowledge of, of high level things. Everybody appreci appreciates that, you know, um, the whole, you know, you know I, I always cringe when people say, well, we're, you know, they treat us like mushrooms here, you know, they keep us in the dark and feed us. Yep. <laughs> right. And that's, that's like, okay, no one should ever say that. Right. Everybody wants a certain, they want to feel, be part of a team. How do you part of a team? You have information, the overall you know, changes, goals, or going on in the company um, that doesn't yep. compromise any confidentiality, things like that, right? Yep, yep, right on, man. Because they are excited. I mean, a great salesperson is excited about the product they sell, the company they represent. It makes their story stronger where they're, yeah. when they're out in front of a customer at the end of the day, right? Yeah, yep, absolutely. And it's, I mean, from a sales leadership perspective, it's got to be about driving belief a, a, a lot of time. And so, all of these things play into the person's level of belief in, in themselves, in their sales leader, in their products, in their team, in their company. And if we have these little infightings, right? These little, like you call internal headwinds that are unnecessary, we continue to have those that degrades the level of belief. Yeah. It erodes the passion. And everybody's got to be passionate, right? This is a, you know, whatever in part of it, there's so much technology and egg, so many products, so many people trying to fight for a space or create a space with a new right. product, man, you got to show up passionate, a really passionate, anything that takes away from that um, is exhausting. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Love it, man. Well, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, in your experience, what has, what's worked for you as it pertains to retaining good salespeople keeping good people on your team. Uh, obviously, obviously attraction is, is a big component of it too. I'm, I'm hiring for one right now. I'm going through the attraction process. Um, but what is that, uh, what's that attraction retention look like for you from an intentional leadership standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, attraction now is, 
you know, it's, it all depends on what social media platform you like, what everyone's to, I think you have to use them all to some extent and, and figure out where the audience in this case, future employees are at, it would, it would appear that LinkedIn is a source for that. Right. So I think keeping up those presence, keeping up the um, appearance, timely information uh, on social media is really, I was really excited to see you know, I think the world for, for someone looking for new employees, um, the game's been changing a little bit from my perspective. When, when you are looking for those mid-level or senior sales folks, um, mm -hmm. it was all kind of headhunters, you know, headhunter, headhunter, headhunter. And, and that's great. Um, worked with them for many years on both sides of the fence. But now it's really changed. And I would say that if you do a good enough job on certain platforms, people come to you and you can start advertising. So I've seen a I've seen an evolution in the last couple of years where, you know, you're getting a, a albeit a larger candidate pool with some underqualified people. You're getting some stars that are coming through you, coming to you that aren't necessarily always be a headhunter. So that's been a big, uh, I guess, revelation of the last several years. Um and again, not to take away from anyone who is, a, you know, a professional in the space of headhunting, career placement, whatever. But uh, LinkedIn has kind of gotten legs off of its own now <laughs> on that. And if you've done a good job and got those people following you on, on that platform, um, they're excited. And when your HR person comes on board and say, hey, we're hiring in this for this position in this area, uh, remote or on site. Wow, we've been I've been extremely uh, impressed. Um, it doesn't it doesn't go away from the traditional methods, but I think it's a very legitimate uh, avenue now that's that's working and bringing good candidates in. So that's great to see. Um, that's one thing uh, advertising for retention. I think yeah, it's I it, tap, yeah. I want to tap before we move to retention because yeah, you bring up you brought up something interesting that really I don't think anybody else has brought up on the podcast yet, which is brand positioning of you as the leader or or your or your company in social media as, promoting it as a place that people would want to come and work absolutely like so i would be i mean a a, a tactical measurement would be to go, be able to go out there and search linkedin for your company maybe it's a company hashtag or maybe it's just look up trying to search your company are your employees posting talking about working for you as an employer because that's a way to attract, right? The, totally. If I see, you know, I've, I've seen one, one particular company just this last week must have picked up four new people. So all of a sudden, here's a regional manager with this company. Here's another regional manager with that co same company. You know, here's two salespeople with that company. Like, okay, guess who's growing? Guess who's hiring? And that creates some excitement. It does. Right? And, the, and then people are like, oh, yeah, well, and then like, but right now there's, I know of another company that's about to do a huge riff. <laughs> And, right. and the market's going to flood with a whole bunch of great people. I've, yeah. I've trained many of them. And so I know that they're great people. So um, th th these kind of things happen all the time, obviously, but now it's much more public and we're able to see that happen in real time. Now everybody knows about it. The moment that somebody posts on, goes on LinkedIn and puts open to work. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Or hiring, right? I literally just put the little hiring badge on my LinkedIn last night. And today I have like 15 new profile views from people I would never hear from. Yeah. Or wouldn't, would never know. And I'm like, oh, what's he doing? Right. Or what are they doing? Absolutely. No, absolutely. It's really changed. And I've I'd like say two years, I've really seen the ramp up of that. So it's refreshing to see. And it just really goes to, if you, if you listen to your marketing people, you know, you, which you should, you know, it's not about always content and yeah, you need the heady content around your product or, you know, whatever, every now and then from a PhD, but it is that, you know, frequency as well. And it can be the frequency, Hey, we're at this trade show or Hey, great meeting here with, and you're at the back of the meeting and it's full of farmers and you just took a picture and had someone take a picture from your phone and you're up speaking to, you know, and you see all the heads, like people go, wow, there's like 80 growers there. This must be something good. I don't think they just came for the free lunch. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think it's all that it, it's not one thing. It's a combination uh, of everything and, and marketing um, is still, you know, a big piece of this. And uh, I think for a lot of us, it's just like revenue, revenue, revenue. Well, what about if you do a great job on, on that front of social media of attracting talent? 
and mm -hmm. uh, definitely well, and found that to change. My my bold prediction for the next five to ten, well, for sure the next five years, and I think it'll be it'll it'll go beyond twenty thirty for sure. But I believe that we're now in the the rise of the personal brand as the dominant force, yeah. and this has been true for a long time. It just hasn't been digital, right? I mean, headhunters have been recruiting great salespeople, right? And then in in you know if you're on a call with a recruiter, and they'll say, hey, give me the the top three people that you'd like to have, right? right? But they won't take a call with you, or they're not open to it right now. Then the recruiter starts to call them up. Well, of course you're calling the three best salespeople that you can think about that are currently at your competition. Right. 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 Well, it, yeah. And that, that's a pitfall as well. Right. I, I think there's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a double edged sword, right. <laughs> to go that yeah, way. That maybe, you know, you're giving them an idea of, of who you would like, right. Right. Well, why do we want them? Well, because they're good. They got a certain brand in the marketplace, right. They've got existing relationships. They don't have to build that person from the ground up. There's I'm acquiring business by bringing that person over ideally, because hopefully their customers will want to come with them now what i think you're going to see in social media is as the salesperson or as a or, or even as a great team leader you have the opportunity to brand yourself now absolutely right? just like we follow a brand like i yeah i mean i'm, I'm a, I grew up in minnesota grew up as a vikings fan but adam thielen right grew up an hour from where where i grew up in minnesota Right, left the Vikings, went to the Carolina Panthers. I start following the Panthers. I mean, they they went one in twelve or one in seventeen or whatever this year. <laughs> so it wasn't much to watch, and I don't know if he'll be there next year. But I, I wanted to start watching more of them, not because I'm a Panthers fan. You're following the individual, right? <laughs> yep. And that happens all the time with customers in the ag industry. And so now I think, I, not that your company brand doesn't matter. But it's never been anything. It's excuse me. It's never been everything. But today, but today, it's less. Yeah, and, and what you're boiling this all down to is relationships, right? And this 100%. thing really is is you know we as you as you're looking for folks, you know, it's like especially again, I take it from my my lens is that of someone who the manufacturers rep, right? What do you want? You want someone who's the retailers trust, who distribution trust, if that's your method of your go to go to market strategy, but that can really you know pick up where they left off the trust gets translated to what if that person leaves to a different company trust is translated over to whatever they went to they trusted that person when they were selling this to them for x amount of years they know that person will not go to a company that has you know shoddy product etc cetera, etc cetera. they've done their homework they're smart so i think that's that's uh it's huge right and it's it is personal branding so it's and it, it now forces the leader, the manager, the VP, the whatever, to do a better job of being better. Just number one, being better because now you're, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, this is capitalism at its finest. You've now got to be a better leader to attract the best talent. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. That guy doesn't want to go work for somebody that he can just, you know, that, that, that doesn't push him to be better. That gal doesn't want to go work for somebody who can't mentor them well. Right. So yeah. there are people at that level, they want to grow. So now I think as the leader, you also have the opportunity to, sh to be a thought leader around leadership. And it's so easy to do because th the LinkedIn's and the Snapchat's and the Facebook's of the world make it so simple for us to just share. And, and again, it's, it's taking 15 minutes out of a day to just write some stuff down and post it, share what you're doing, share yeah. your thoughts, share other people's thoughts and add your comments to it. You don't even have to write original content. <laughs> no, mar marketing provides the guidelines. And is it wrong for you as a salesperson to have your phone in your cell phone holder going down the road, keeping eyes on the road, of course, or in a parking lot and not to do some little, I just got out of this, you know, meeting and did that. We did this. Absolutely not. It's all content, right? And it doesn't have to be polished. And I think that's really probably, you know, as you look at generally, generationally as well. Gen X versus millennials versus whatnot, probably, you know, I'm a Gen Xer and you go, wow, we need this spit polish. It needs to be perfect. And that totally got blown away by, you know, the, the Snapchat generation, Instagram, whatever, right. Uh, it's gone. And it's all just about content and frequency. And, and yes, you do need those polished, beautiful videos every now and then that you have in the bank and that you put on YouTube and, and those type of things, but it's about uh, being, you know, purposely creating content on a timely basis, not going, oh gosh, you know, it's been a year since I've done something on 
this platform. <laughs> you miss you miss the opportunity, right? <laughs> you've you've well, reached again. It. It's about intentional leadership, right? That means we're we're being consistent. We're being That's deliberate. Right have to keep it you know you got it's it's like anything right it's like everything but you know my, my encouragement to people would be to not discount the tools that we have at our disposal that are just so freaking free yeah absolutely yeah right there, there's yeah. there's no uh nothing has to look perfect uh when you're given a meeting in, in uh, wherever and there's 20 growers sitting there uh, that's a good, that's information It you know, what, what gets translated? Hey, there's people that care about this product. That's the perception uh, and the reality of, of things just like that. People go, oh gosh, you know, it's not, I don't have a perfect looking backdrop or this isn't the most beautiful, uh, restaurant, you know, in the world where we're, we're doing the back room of this restaurant for this meeting at breakfast and it's, it's poorly lit. Well, I'll turn the lights on, whatever. Um, yeah, simple things like that. that I think we forget about, right? To right on, man. Well, okay, we're we're coming up on our time here, Justin. Yeah. We'll we'll definitely have to do another one of these down the road. We'd love love to talk more aspects of sales leadership and team leadership and all those things. Any last thoughts that you'd like to leave with the with the crew here today? No, I appreciate the time. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, great, great catching up with you uh, on the on the front side here. And uh, no, I just really appreciate the time. Love what you're doing here. Yeah, I would uh, welcome to be on this again. So thanks. Love it, man. Love it. This is super great. Vibrant conversation today, guys. Go um, check out Ostara, O-S-T-A-R-A, -A, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, go, go, go check out that company. They've got some cool, cool um, products serving the fertilizer market. And, um, and these guys are doing a great job from everything I can glean. So uh, Justin, thanks for being on. Thank you. Have a great one.